the ear-splitting sound was the fire alarm. As usual Mr. Deck, blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. When we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked and playing his guitar. He shouted down, when I finish this song, I'm going to fly. The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do. By the time I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down. But he was acting even more bizarre than usual. After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. I don't think he liked that either. But at least he was still in one piece. <sighs> A month or so later, Heather and I were playing video games. When the old man said he wanted me to come outside, he said it had been a year since I had arrived. So, he had a present for me. He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform, he then told me I should try to pick it up. <laughs> try as I might, I couldn't reach the teddy bear. However, I still don't understand what happened next.
Was I dead? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. The old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Amazingly, the shoes allowed me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was the hat. Part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked. I would need a key. I had to be careful. The electricity was going haywire in some places. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? I was slightly scared. This was the first time I had been outside on my own. I knew what I had to do, this had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things, so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant. I was surprised to see an old man, but not as surprised as he was. It turned out he was blind. He was kneeling on the floor with his hand in a drain. When I asked him what he was doing, he said his cat had crawled into the pipes, and he was trying to get her out. He was very happy when I offered to help. He said there was no way we could reach her from here so if I was willing, I could make my way through the sewers and and get her from the other end. He said he would turn off the water for as long as possible, but I would have to run, as the pipes would soon fill up again. I happily agreed. So he gave me a key. He said this will open all the sewer gates. Go through here, then down the ladder, and through the big door at the bottom. I better run. I 
I better run. I found the old man's cat. She was fine, if a little confused. I was horrified. It looked like me. But it shambled around like something from the film we watched on Halloween. The man was happy to have his cat back. He looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, Those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. If I had my way, we'd have blown up the lot of them when we had the chance. I wasn't sure what he meant, but I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed, and said, don't worry, I know who you are, and told me that he knew the old man. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man, in fact he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. And he did. He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind the cupboard. Then he continued saying, the old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, Wait a minute. It's empty isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. I was robbed a few months ago. He said, almost in a whisper. It's strange, they took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. The man looked sad, so I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. He said I was welcome to go back through the pipes any time I wanted, as there were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away.
the gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. The screaming was coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire. The people screaming turned out to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. 
At first the man looked like he was ready to fight me. But after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. I dropped the children off at the front door, and promised them that I would be back with their parents. The fire was getting much worse, so the woman went next. When we got to the front door, all the woman said was, Thank you, please hurry. By the time I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment. I helped the family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got the camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. There wasn't anything I could clean. But to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games console. With a bit of fiddling I was able to get them to work. So I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said. There was a war. Yes. A war said the man. One side of the planet attacked the other, and before we knew, it was all over. Everything gone. Everything destroyed. Well, it's late, said the woman. We should really get some sleep. Help yourself to anything you need, and we'll see you tomorrow. In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring, constant electrical surges from the unreliable power plant, take your pick. He said, if we had the money, we'd move to the mainland. But we can barely feed ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war, my lovely wife used to be a fisherman. 
fishwoman? Fishing person? I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from a fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. I was a little scared, but then they gave me some captain software and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town. <laughs> 